All right, you know who my next guest is? Jay-Z Cavalcante, who has a big fight next against Rick Hahn on October the 21st at Combat FC2. Jay-Z, how are you? I'm doing great, my man. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be back fighting. Another great opponent, you know, so it's, uh, it's good. It's fun. A good time. Well, it's, it's an honor to have you on the show. I mean, anybody that is in the combat sports world knows exactly who you are. And I just want to start with, uh, you know, getting back into active competition as, as a mixed martial artist. I know you've been doing a lot of grappling. You've been very active as far as that goes, but you haven't fought in MMA since 2018. So what is bringing you back in here for this fight against Rick? Man, that's crazy. 2018, right? Doesn't seem that long, but it's cool. Yeah. The thing was like uh, after the Black Zillions, you split away like when the Glenn Robson died and all. So the Black Zillions, the team was kind of over. I was like uh, taking care of some of the part of the fighters, like uh, the inter, like the amateur and the lower level guys, you know. So I kind of created the, my own, not my own team, but I have the team. I was like the tryouts for the for the bigger team, you know. And with it there. After the Black Zillions fall apart, you know, I have some troubles with one of the coaches. And then I was like, okay, uh, instead of following, staying with the group, I said, I want to do my own thing. So me and Daniel Mendes, which is my partner at the Fight Sport here for the beach, like I said, man, uh, he's a great striking coach. I have the grappling. I have the experience in MMA. He, he does as well. He trained many great fighters. I said, like, why don't you... Let's just keep doing our own thing, you know? And I was tired of all the all the drama with the big teams and stuff. And I said, okay, let me do my thing. So it's still a big team, fight sports, like a jiu-jitsu world. It's a great, uh, great event, you know, a great team. Uh, so now we're putting more MMA on my gym as well. So that's, I uh, also have my, my wife who got pregnant, business, teaching, Head coach was too much on my plate, even the, the last couple of fights. Like, the I had a couple of losses that I shouldn't have lost, you know, like because I was, I know myself that I wasn't training properly because of all the obligations and duties that I had, you know. But I love fighting, so I love, uh, I love competing. Since I fight since six years old, I compete since that young, you know. So I was feeling like, okay, I just want to do something. But my wife was, was a good uh, walkout. So she, she looked at me, look, what are you doing with your life? <laughs> what are you doing with this? What do you want to do now? I say, uh, yeah, it's a good, like, it was a great, a good question. You know, somebody that's close to you, that knows you. I know she has all the best interests in her heart for me, you know. Also, she gets scared. It'll be like after I had a couple of injuries and stuff. And, uh, she knows could be like, okay, a little setback. So that's that. That was my point. And then, then I took a break to organize the gym. Now the things are good. And I'm like, okay, uh, the opportunity came. I said, great, let's do it. How much longer do you envision yourself, you know, fighting in, in MMA? I mean, I'm sure you're going to be competing in, in grappling and other various events for, for a long time. But as far as MMA goes, how many more fights do you feel like you have? Or how many years do you think you have? Uh, let's let, if I have like a, to put a number on the number of the fights, I would say three, four fights. If everything goes well, I had good like a promotions and stuff. I don't know, but I so I I can see myself doing longer. Just how my body's handling, how my how I'm feeling. I don't know if things are organized, uh, pretty stable with the other sides of life. Um, I can still do it more, I don't know, because I'm healthy, uh, I'm in shape, I'm good, I'm competing, I'm competing the grappling for the best, like the best young kids, and I'm still handling myself very well, I don't know, I'm still being competitive, so I know my body, I know the way I'm working, the way I take care of my body, I still can do it longer, so it's just about like the right, the right timing, right promotion, the right, uh, uh, financial, you know, the right person, stuff like that makes uh, makes everything work. 
but I'm planning that way. You, you mentioned all of your obligations that you have, and, and I wanted to ask you just about the coaching aspect because you're a wealth of knowledge. You have so much knowledge in the sport, and it just seems like, I mean, you have such a good demeanor. I feel like you'd be a really phenomenal coach. Is that something that you feel like you could be even better at in the second part of your career as a coach, even better than a fighter? Because again, I just feel like you'd be the perfect coach with, with your demeanor and, and knowledge base. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the compliment. You know? And that's, uh, I have, a, okay, I mean, the view myself in another aspect of fighting as well, which is the management. I work with the TGM, T, TGM management. They invite me in because like at first they were, they were getting fight, uh, fights to my fighters. And then I start helping them with like, a, okay, GZ, like because they were offer me so many fights. I say, bro, I don't have that big of a team. And the guys that I have, they, they, they already fought last month. So how come you want to, you like you're asking them to fight again? No, it's not, it's not possible. But I know I know a lot of people, you know, especially here in Florida. I know all the fighters that are around here, and I have many friends that were looking for fights. So I start like a suggesting, hey, I have this guy, try this guy. Oh, I have that guy. And then Marcelo, who is one of the guys from the TGM, he asked, Jay-Z, would you ever thought about working like a uh, with management? I said, man, that was one thing that I really didn't really think about it because I don't like, I'm not the guy that likes to be on the phone as much, you know? And I was like, uh, I'm not sure. And then he was like, okay, because you're doing a good job, like uh, suggesting people, you would be great. Also for the grappling, I want you to be the executive of the grappling because grappling now it's growing as a pro sport and have more pro events. Like, why don't you take it apart and say, oh, okay. Now we talk because I want to help the sport, especially like a grappling. I come from Luta Livre Blazing, which is like the no gi that people do today, right? Jiu Jitsu. Uh, is the basically, and, and that's my first love. And I love to see the sport growing. And then after I wasn't fighting MMA, I started competing more in grappling. And then the passion went, came back, you know? So the Marcel approach, like with the management, was a great approach because he brought me in to help him more with the grappling. And now I'm helping more with the MMA as well. So I'm getting all the fighting. So even like with uh, like with the fighters, I work with them. I know both sides, you know. Whenever I say whenever I send the contract to to, to somebody, you know, to a fighter, I know fighters sometimes they I send five minutes later, they send the, the contract back. I send it back, I say, read the contract, you know, because they don't. That's one thing I learned a lot of from my career. A lot of guys, they don't read the contract. They see the numbers. They go what is important. Oh, how much am I making? What way? Who's the opponent? And this, and that's it. Mm -hmm. They don't quite, they don't, most of the time, they don't ask questions. They don't know how long is the contract. They don't know if they can uh, terminate the contract right after if they have a champion clause, stuff like that, you know, people don't think about. And if they have a man, if they have contract with somebody else, so those stuff like make it very hard. So what, as a fighter, because I'm still a fighter, when I see guys doing that, I say, bro, chill, relax, man. Like I'm here to help, you know. And that's good for them as well, because kind of get a little trust, you know, like, oh man, I have somebody that's looking out for me. The same thing with the coaching. Um, I believe like uh, it, it's no way that I can move away from fighting. It's been my whole life. I can, but I always want to do some with fighting involved, you know. And uh, I really believe I do good, can do good work, you know, mindset. Like I always pay attention on all aspects of the fighting. So as a coach and as a manager, I believe uh, I'm helping a lot of guys and can do help them to get their, their goals as well, you know, to, I, I made the path. I know it's different today, but I, when I say something, they can get that trust. They can get that connection. Okay. He, he knows what he's talking about. Yeah. It, it seems like, you know, a, a lot of fighters nowadays, and I mean, it rightfully so. If, if I think if I was a young fighter, and I had dreams of making it to the highest of levels that that would be like where my focus is at all the time. Like 
I just got to get in there and fight it regardless of what it is so I can rack up wins to, to make it to the UFC. Right. And with someone like yourself, that's been fighting for so long. I mean, you have so much experience. I mean, you fought for K one dream strike force W uh, world series of fighting cage warriors that go on and on. When you look at everything that you've done in your career, all the great fighters that you've shared the cage with, are, are you pleased? Like, did you accomplish everything that you wanted to do when you first set out as a fighter? Uh, as a fighter, like, a, because today I have my hat in, like, a different spot, you know? As a fighter, I, I accomplish everything that I put myself in, you know? Like, uh, when I look back, I say, man, I, I, like, I did, I did some of those. I still have all this stuff that I didn't accomplish, you know? But my main, like, in the picture, I live the dream. I still live the dream today, you know? Like, a, uh, because that's another thing. Sometimes we have a dream. Imagine like a 20, 30, 20, 20, 25 years ago, I would have a dream in my mind that I'm living today. And sometimes we forget. Sometimes it's not that clear, you know, because it's passed so long. And like, I remember my first fight, uh, my dream was to fight in Japan before when I started, when I was a teenager. On my fourth, I think it was my fourth fight, I was fighting in Japan against Joaquin Hansa, who was a Shoto champion. And Shoto was one of my favorite organization, not the favorite event, but was the favorite organization because how they hang the fighters, a fighter would fight for the title. He would really have to be like on the rank, not like uh, many organizations today that like a rank doesn't mean shit, you know? <laughs> so I was like, man, I, like, I, I want to fight this event. I want to be the champion here. And then on, on my fourth fight, I was fighting there. And I was like, oh man. And it's funny because my I was talking to my mom. I was living already in America. I haven't seen her like for two, three, two years. And then she was like, oh, Jay, congratulations. Like you live in your dream, right? I say, oh yeah. Yeah, it's true. Like I was talking about, you know, but I wasn't like I really wasn't really clear for me. She was the one that brought it up for me. Like you fight in Japan, and then she said, because I always want to have a tattoo. I want to get a tattoo when I was younger. I love my family. And she didn't allow me to have a tattoo because I was underage. She was like, no, no, no. And when I was there, she was like, hey, why don't you do the, the tattoo, you know? And then that's uh, she got the idea. And that means I love my family in Japanese. And like, uh, just because she pointed it out, like it brought, okay, that was my dream. You know, I'm living my dream right now. So let's make it one, especially because I have a lot of my family. My mom was there. I was fighting in Japan. So it's so much like a, at one point, you know? And so this is stuff that get the, get the experience, you know? For so sure. I accomplish a lot of this stuff that I put myself in. I want to transition to this fight with Rick here in a second, fighting for Combat FC. But first, one last question about your, your career thus far. Who was the hardest fight of your career? When you look back at everything, is there one that stands out that you just had to dig deep to go to like another level that maybe you didn't know you had to, to get in there and, and pull out a win? Ryan Schultz. I know it's not like a, a common name. I, I fought so many big names, you know, but Ryan Schultz was like, like me and him was like a, the next big star, you know, the next prospect. He was from Team Quest at the time uh, with uh, Matt Linda, Randy Kutu, then the Chow, those guys on there. So uh, I, the fight with him ended up being a draw, but was very, like a very close fight, you know, and I had to dig that he was a good wrestler, good grinder. And at the end, like at the end, I remember at the end of the third round, I mean, picking him up, getting the take down, you know, like a big hitting. Like, he knocked me down. I had my first knockdown. It was a flash down, like a, I just dropped on the knee. I didn't really fell, but like a, just drop a little bit on my knee and come back up. I was like, oh, shit, I'm in the fight. But, you know? And then at the end of the of the fight, I, I, I could manage to also take him down and get a little better control. So that was the fight for me. It was like, a, okay, let's move on. 
All right. Yeah. I mean, a, a ton of huge names that you fought in your career. Again, I could go down a whole list and, and name a bunch of them. You fought and you've been in there with the best of the best. Let's talk about this upcoming fight again, combat FC two October the 21st. It's in Wilmington, Massachusetts, and it's going to be on UFC fight pass. So if you can't be there in new England, you can watch on UFC fight pass. I'm sure people all across the world will be tuning in to this event. When do you actually leave? When are you coming up to, to Massachusetts for this fight? Uh, like four days before, I think it's the 21st or the 18th or something like that. Okay. And this fight is a welterweight bout, so 170 pounds. What are you walking around at right now? Actually, and... I think going to be a catch weight is 165. Okay. Uh, it's 165. And like I, I'm pretty close to, I'm not that heavy. I'm not cutting that much weight like I used to, you know, especially because I used to fight at 155. Uh, so this one going to be a, a little bit over so 165 so it's easy 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 work okay very good that'll, that'll be easy but you don't have to make that big weight cut that always makes life a lot easier now your opponent he's a veteran just like yourself he's been in at the highest of levels as well rick Hahn, his last fight his last mma fight was all the way back in 2015 and that was a split decision victory over pat healy so when you look at this guy and what he does best break this fight down for me jay-z what what do you think we're gonna see come october 21st damn his last fight was 15 yeah so it's you longer than me it's funny because like uh my last victory, if I'm not mistaken, was against Patty Hill as well in 2017 or probably some, something like that. So it's nice to have a, a fighting coma on the list. Yeah. No, but Rick is a, he's a tough guy. He's a, he's a warrior, you know, and uh, he uses a lot of his, his hands. He, even that he's a judo guy. I don't see him grappling as much. I know he does like a good foot sweeps and some throws, but not as much to use it. You know, he doesn't use as much like a, as his main thing. So I know he's going to be bringing some heat with the hands and fighting, striking. That's what he likes to do most. And then, and that's not nothing different for me, you know. I, 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 do, I do well with that. I also fought the K1 like a striking only in the low kickbox. I fought against one of the best ever, Masato. Uh, and I couldn't handle myself well. So it's pretty, pretty interesting to see how the fight goes. You know, Science also, he hasn't been fighting for a while. He also fought in some grappling tournament. Maybe he can try to switch it up something. We'll see. But uh, it's also a good uh, surprise when somebody doesn't fight for that long, what they have been doing, what skills they have been developing, what kind of mindset they are, they are at, you know? That, that's, that is very true. Do, do you feel like if this fight does hit the mat and you get to utilize your jujitsu, that you're just going to have a major advantage there? Do you feel like that's your easiest path to victory? Not just the jujitsu, but the luta livre. That's my background. A lot of people mistake that just because of grappling and do the ground. I'm from Brazil. They think it's just Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Uh, my first base was from Luta Libre, which is like a, another Brazilian grappling style, which is the basically the no gi. But yes, yeah, like a, I do have that advantage. I, I honestly, I do have that advantage every aspect of the fight, even in striking. Maybe not with the judo, but everything else like that. I'm pretty confident. How excited are you for this fight to be on UFC Fight Pass and to be fighting for, for Combat FC? I know Joe and, and Rick, uh, they, they really want to take this promotion to the absolute highest of levels. And obviously, they're off to a good start with it being on UFC Fight Pass. Can you just kind of speak to your excitement level to, to be fighting on the show? No, it's a, it's a great, you know, they come with a good fight for me, you know, like a, they get, it's a nice event. They're putting a good, uh, a good promotion there. And and that's what I'm talking about. Like, if I can help with like the name that I have the experience, and then I can help with the event that's also growing, and everybody's growing, and making the sports grow. That's a that I think that's all. All the fighters, everybody connect with the sport should be doing. You know, not just fighting for yourself. Like, oh, I'm I'm looking for one side of the part. I want to take you know, like I want to take the whole piece of the cake just for you. No, man, come on. Let's 
let's make a bigger cake so everybody can eat from the same cake, you know? It's, uh, that's the idea. So Combat FC, uh, me, Ricky Hall, good, two good veterans, you know, two big names, old school dogs, you know, it's going to be a great match, especially to put on the UFC Fight Pass so people can watch it, can be in tune in and see a great sport, you know, a great, uh, great warriors going against each other. Give me your official prediction. Ultimately, how do you see this fight ending? My arm is raised. And besides that, I, I cannot do the predictions, but my uh, arm raised, and I hope, like, I hope I put a good end of a career for Rick. You know, like I know he's a look. Uh, he's also on that age, like at that that point that he was looking for the retirement. Uh, he's a warrior, and I know he want to get out of the the sport fighting, you know, so fighting hard. So I'm going to put a good victory for him. You know, the war is the face forward. You know, they fall facing forward in the war, going against the opponent. That's uh, that's all I want to put it for him. You know, like when you, because if you win, what is the, what is the point of stopping? You know, so I'll put a good end of career for him. And he go, walks out as a good warrior that he is. And you will see what I do next. I love it. I can't wait for October 1st. Uh, I'll, I'll be there in person. So I definitely look forward to getting a chance to, to meet you there, uh, maybe before or after the event. Before we do sign off, Jay-Z, I wanted to ask you too about, you know, what's going on in Florida right now with, with the hurricane? Has that affected you where, where you live? And uh, what's the proximity to, to where uh, Deerfield Beach is versus where the hurricane is? Yeah, like uh, actually, like the, that is a place I used to teach as well in Delray. That's like a 15, 18 minutes north of where I live. And there was some like bad car accident, you know, like the, the cars move, the trees fall on the on top of the cars. And so I like when I saw that I was pretty like, oh shit, man, that that's right here. You know, it's close to me. It could be, it could be my house. But thanks God, like nothing in my area here, the gym on the day of the hurricane. Earlier we had the training in the morning, so everything was like fine. Uh nothing major on my area, you know, but I also checking out with the friends that I have that lives in the neighborhood, the close neighborhood that was affected. But thanks God, nothing, like a nothing major, nobody got to hurt. Nobody has any, like a major situation on this. So it's it's fine, you know. Okay. It, it's funny because like I've been in Florida, I mean, I'm here almost like 20 years now. And I have the humor, like I have two hurricanes that was kind of bad, you know. Beside that, we kind of get like relax too much, but the the like oh hurricane is coming, you know. Everywhere else, people are so worried. Like a year, kind of ah, okay. We most of the people are chill, but then uh, we gotta remember it's nature. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of power, you know, and that it's unpredictable what they can do. So it's always a good call out. Like okay, let's prepare for these. Let's take this serious. Well, definitely prayers to, to everyone uh, down there in the, the Florida area that is being affected by this hurricane. Hopefully uh, it, it doesn't get any worse and, and the worst of it is behind us. Again, uh, Jay-Z, I appreciate the time today. Jay-Z Cavalcante will take on Rick Hahn next October the 21st on UFC Fight Pass for Combat FC2. Uh, I want to give you the floor before we sign off. Please tell people where they can find you on social media. If you have anything you want to plug like your gym, website, uh, the floor is yours, my friend. Okay, thanks, guys. Uh, you can find them on, on social media. My name is, is Jezias, G-E-S-I-A-S. So it's pretty, pretty unique name, but I know it's hard for people to remember. So, But if you put Jay-Z MMA, most of the time you're going to find a tag or something that you can connect me. Also, I have the gym in, in Deerfield Beach in Florida, South Florida Fight Sport right here, Deerfield Beach. And... That's where I teach. I have the, we have the MMA team. I also teach regular people. So whatever people in the area want to train, want to get some good grappling going on, get different styles, more than welcome. I love to train different people. A lot of training for guys that has no idea. It's a blank uh, canvas so I can paint the art with fighting as well. And uh, TGM management, if you're a fighter looking to to go for the next level, working like a, coming from the amateur career to the pro, uh, 
you can look out for me as well. And the, the link for the management team is TGM underscore management. So you link up with us. We take a look of your career, what we can do, how can we work and bring, bring to the next level, bring to the next event.